Hi, welcome to this comparison of Data Space and the Shuttle RS. They are both platforms for development and deployment of cloud applications, and they both support Rust. You can also see the content of these slides on uh, GitHub pages, or you can clone it uh, from GitHub, or you can download the PDFs. If you clone it and you follow a few steps in the source of README, you can also add, uh, view them offline and at your pace. Standard disclaimers apply. The main ones are that this is not a complete introduction to either platform. You do not need uh, any deep knowledge of Rust for this. And uh, surprise, the, these uh, platforms are new and they are work in progress. So there are good things coming. And if this gets outdated, please let me know. Some of the features and limits are not Rust specific, but they do affect how the applications are deployed and for what purpose, hence I'm including them here. You can also look at the source code of my four applications, uh, two for each platform. I used uh, three Rust framework, web frameworks for them. They're trivial applications uh, and um, useful for if uh, two, one for each platform, uh, show the, the system information like uh, directory listing, uh, quotas of uh, or the uh, available space on the uh, mounted drive drives, and uh, and one on uh, shuttle RS shows uh, the headers as that was uh, that I used to to document that uh, neither of the platforms uh, shows IP addresses coming from the client. On data space, you can see a transient web dev server. It's a tiny one uh, that it uses its data spaces uh, file limit of up to 500 uh, or so megabytes. And uh, I will be sharing my bookmarks and highlights for Firefox on uh, data space, shuttle RS, and uh, Rust. So feel free to use them. Even though they are, it's a transient uh, uh, um, file share, it will be synchronized from my Firefox. So if data uh, restarts it for any reason, it will uh, get uh, synchronized there soon. And uh, I docu I've documented steps on how you can um, read and synchronize those bookmarks into your Firefox. Spoiler alert, I love them both. Before we get into the qual uh, qualities and uh, li limits of uh, each platform, let's have a quick look at the source code and uh, some configuration. Data space uses space file, which is a YAML file with uh, s uh, simple entries. It's very well documented. And if all you need is defaults, or if if you don't need any private routing or special features, it's very easy. However, Rust support is quite new at data space, and uh, occasionally Rust applications don't work if you build them with a standard target that uses glibc. For because of that, I suggest that. In the interim, you use the Musil target, which is a lightweight Linux uh, statically compiled target that doesn't use glibc at all. It has its own implementation of std library, and that works very well. On data space, you use whatever crates and you you, you want in your or you need in your application, and uh, there are no specific uh, crates from data need it, other than the unofficial uh, data space SDK. The configuration gets done in your application where you need to read the port environment variable and use that as the web port of your application. Or actually, it's not the application, it's the micro, which you can have up to five of them in the same application. We'll get to that soon. In Shuttle RS, there is no mandatory configuration file other than that there is a file called shuttle 
dot toml but all it does for now is is that you can specify the application name in it but it's optional and you can specify that in uh, the CL, CLI uh, as, as you deploy the application anyway configuration is done or uh, the integration with shuttle is done through custom crates provided by shuttle and you can see them here for example this is a cargo terminal for a web app that uses XM and shuttle provides two XM crates shuttle XM and shuttle runtime then oh then let's look how it is used the and here you see an attribute uh, a procedural macro shuttle runtime main uh, which you apply to the function that serves the um, your application and in this instance the result type is uh, custom to shuttle exam exam shuttle exam that is very well documented with uh, examples or tutorials and it works well out of the box however since we are looking at the source code you may want to remember that if you are using advanced features of those frameworks su supported by shuttle it does get complicated because you may use uh, features like uh, retrieving or handling and setting uh, non-default non headers or your own MIME types or, or, or any, uh, any, anything that is non-default is not trivial with shuttle. You may find uh, tutorials on the web for this, uh, on how to implement it with Exum uh, or, uh, the, or the other uh, frameworks for sure. But if you then want to connect it with shuttle, you may need to do more, more exploration and you may want to be uh, combining and uh, experimenting, but that's part of our um, passion. Here's an example of cargo terminal for Actix web deployed on shuttle. And again, you have two special um, crates, shuttle Actix web and shuttle runtime. And uh, here's how it is used in the source code. You apply a procedural attribute macro shuttle runtime main and uh, the as async function uh, actix web returns a custom type shuttle actix web both uh, platforms share these features they are deployed on on the linux machines but you can locally develop on linux mac os and windows mm. you don't we don't have a, a su, su or sudo access and we cannot customize at docker level mm. neither of them provides access to the client IP address. So you cannot do IP dependent logic, uh, uh, rate limiting or geo IP handling. Uh, with a data space, you can, and actually most likely with a shuttle RS2, you can use uh, special headers, for example, from a Cloudflare DNS. And both platforms are active on a Discord the community is helpful. Here are data space features. The applications can be private, accessible to you, the developer only, or public. That's one of the main differences between data and Shuttle RS, as Shuttle RS doesn't have private applications. Uh, on data, you can access those private applications if you authenticate in the browser, and uh, most likely with uh, CURL or uh, other tools too. On data, you can also publish uh, te test versions, uh, deploy test versions that are not published, and they stay private until until you publish them. Data doesn't have access to your password for authentication. That goes through AWS. The other big feature is mesh design. Your application can be a mesh of up to five computes, each with its own limits and uh, file system, they can communicate between themselves, even though some of them or, or, or most of them can be private and not directly accessible from outside. You can also have routing, public routing that uh, specifies which uh, compute, which micro to use for which uh, URL patterns. That way you can integrate with uh, uh, third party applications 
and uh, those don't have to be in Rust because data space also supports uh, several other languages. That's the other feature. It's a mesh of languages or frameworks. The disadvantage is that Rust support is quite new and uh, uh, it's still work in progress. Rust applications don't get special handling, which gives you some freedom. Uh, for example, you can choose your uh, Rust version or any framework, or you can use nightly Rust if you like. Rust bindings for the data API are only unofficial at the moment, but the HTTP REST API itself is well documented. You don't need any special Rust crates or macros for your code from data space. It doesn't favor uh, SQL RDBMSs like PostgreSQL or MySQL unless you have a pool manager and uh, data space doesn't provide any of, of such databases. Yes, you want you, you, you probably want a musical target at the moment. And uh, a big limitation may be that uh, it doesn't support background or long tasks, Discord board, implementation of Discord boards and web sockets. Data space provides storage both no SQL called database and uh, object or file storage called data store. Uh, they are their proprietary APIs, well documented, but uh, no, uh, no, not uh, available outside of their platform. You can use them locally, though, of course. And they may not be so fully proprietary because data is pretty open, open source. Mm. Data isolation is very good, and you can clone someone's application, have it with your data isolated, and your instance is completely independent, even if the, the original instance owner pub, uh, publishes new versions, you, your application is not affected unless you choose to receive the new versions. Data supports uh, cron-like schedule actions with granularity down to one minute. And uh, it promotes uh, personal or private uh, instances. For example, the subdomains are anonymized with a random uh, postfix. Mm. And the forking instances is very easy. You don't need uh, developer skills for that. There is uh, the marketplace where you can share your uh, applications or, and when you can see what others are sharing and then you can experiment with them. And there's a plan to, have, to offer paid applications that would uh, generate revenue for the developer. Let's look at Shuttle. Shuttle RS specializes in Rust and uh, it's top class at it. The uh, tutorials are well written. It uh, also documents how to connect the middleware, uh, some security and the cryptography uh, features too. It, the uh, the applications deployed on Shuttle are suitable for background on or long tasks. It provides a much richer storage as uh, there are four SQL options, Postgres, MySQL, and MariaDB as dedicated instances and Postgres also as a shared server from Shuttle or Turza, which is a distributed SQL, SQLite fork that is not hosted by shuttle hopefully it will be so one day or there will there would be an option for that but for now you would need to get a free or or commercial hosting from turzo and uh, it also has a dedicated crate from shuttle it offers no sql uh, mongodb shared by shuttle or proprietary key value database called shuttle persist the data is well isolated a small disadvantage or limitation of Shuttle is that because they provide their specialized crates, those are pinned at some versions and they require specific versions or potentially uh, a limited range of versions of uh, dependent crates, those MySQL uh, and other SQL crates or MongoDB crate. And the same with Turzo, it's pinned to fixed version. And the Rust itself is pinned to a fixed, but, but, but a fairly recent version too. Shuttle does have much longer build times because 
they provide attribute macros and uh, those use SERD for uh, uh, syntax parsing, parsing and handling, which is uh, complex. It can take long to build and you can have, it can in, involve uh, from around 300 or even up to 600 dependencies uh, in your project. But if, if you're building it locally, then the, the any success, uh, successive uh, builds are incremental by default. So it, then it, it is much faster. It doesn't have a TMP folder, only the SHM for memory sharing or temporary file system. If so, if you have a, an application that that uses temporary file system, you may want to choose one, or you may want to customize it to you uh, if it depends on a slash TMP. It doesn't promote targeting or sharing clones of applications. So, if you'd like to share your application so that others get their own instance of it on the shuttle RS, you need to do so on the GitHub or some other source sharing service, and they will need to go through the steps to deploy it, which is not a rocket science, but they, they need some more skill, developer skills than with forking an application on data space. There is a limitation of, I believe, up to five applications uh, per user for free, but uh, these limits are not enforced yet. And if you contribute to Shuttle RS, or if you provide, uh, if you create useful applications that help people, Shuttle RS may reward you as a hero, and their uh, hosting and services will be free for you for life. For commercial purposes, they you can or, or they are planning that you can use your own AWS account. Here are some quantitative and other differences. So these are, these don't come out of design and uh, hence they are more likely to be more flexible than the qualitative differences earlier. The biggest ones are memory limits, uh, which, it's, which are not very clear. But on data space, you can have 250 megabytes per each micro per execution. And on shuttle hours, you can have usually up to six gigabytes per container. There is no timeout limitation on shuttle RS, or it's not specified. And on data space, it's 20 seconds. And there are differences between the temporary file system size, but those are, those will hardly make, 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 make a a difference for uh, for mainstream applications. And if your application is parallelized more than a, a, a usual async web application, you may want to look more at, at the limits on processes or threads. On shuttle RS, it's only for threads per project. On data space, it's 1,024 per micro. And if you need to handle more than uh, five to five megabytes uh, pay, HTTP pay payload, then at the moment you need shuttle RS. The storage is lim uh, limit on shuttle RS, RS is 10 gigabytes on free tire, but it's not enforced yet. And it's not specified on data space. And they both uh, use AWS with at least the data space also planning for using GCP or other clouds. Mm -hmm. Choosing between them. There are some minor uh, criteria that, that the or, or trivial one, once if you need a temporary uh, file system on uh, slash TMP or uh, uh, the, the quantitative differences, if, if, if those matter to you, and if, if uh, they are not likely to be changed by, by the platform, then you may choose one or the other, but you can, st you may still ask around because they are work in progress. If you need your applications to be private with a single user only, then at the moment you probably want a data space, but then you, you still need to cons want to consider the storage. You may want this option if you are open to using their database or data, uh, data store. If you need uh, more than two authenticated users, then 
you can use either one because none of them supports it out of the box. If you need to mesh various components into an application or if any part of the application is not in Rust, then you want data space. In, you could potentially implement a mesh of, of Rust components in a shuttle RS with some routing or proxying. And that, that would, could be feasible if, if, if those components use the same web framework for Rust. But it, uh, especially with uh, Shuttle RS special crates, it could get complicated very soon, very early. If you want first class uh, uh, support for Rust, then Shuttle RS are uh, leading and uh, also they offer background or long tasks and the Discord bots. And at the moment, if you'd like uh, cron like schedule actions, then you go with data space. Stability and ergonomics is better with shuttle because of their, their attribute macros and uh, their support for Rust as their only uh, programming language. But if you don't want any special crates or macros, then, then you may want to go with data space, as well as if you, want, if you need to use a, a custom version or a special version or a special ch channel of Rust. With the storage, if you do not want to use a third party uh, SQL or, uh, or non-SQL, then, and if you do not want to adapt or, or to, to use a database or data store, then, then you want Shuttle RS. Otherwise, you get perfect storage with uh, data. The commercial plan for uh, large uh, deployments going over the storage quotas are, is, is not mentioned by data space yet, but, uh, and it's only planned by Shuttle. The free sharing of applications on the platform's uh, website itself is, exists only in data, and as well as the commercial models, well, which don't exist yet, but, uh, but they are planning. Um, um, paid market marketplace. Thank you for listening. I hope you will look at both data space and shuttle RS and enjoy them, develop good applications, share them either on the platform itself or on the Git. Love Rust. Take care.